Hello, I'm Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at ISO 27001 and XA15 logging. I'm going to show you what it is, what you need to do, tools, techniques, so that you can implement it to be maximum successful when it comes to your ISO 27001 certification. Show you a couple of mistakes that people make, common mistakes, so you can avoid them. And I'm going to show you what it is that the auditor is going to look for when it comes time to do your audit. So as always, we're going to start off with a definition, a definition of what the standard wants, and then I can show you how we can meet that. So the definition, the ISO standard defines Annex A815 as logs that record activities, exceptions, faults, and other relevant events should be produced, stored, protected, and analyzed. Okay, what are we doing here? We're looking at logging, right? We're looking at logging certain things that occur within our environment for two reasons really. One is so that we can analyze it and we can identify security events before they occur so that we can do some root cause analysis so that we can do things like looking at trends. And we're also looking at it when incidents do occur so that we can pinpoint and identify who did it and what it is that they did. So there has to be uh, protection of those logs and there has to be some uh, chain of custody around those logs in the very rare occasion where we get into an investigation that could be an internal investigation that leads to some kind of outcome such as a disciplinary action um, or again very very rare where we could be looking at something that leads to a legal investigation. So the, we are going to be placing heavy reliance on the logs. In the day-to-day -day operation, we just kind of want to find out what went on. We want to look at trend analysis, but you know that does occur. The rare occasions where we have to do an investigation, we have to bring in law enforcement, and then that chain of custody becomes important. So let's have a little look at how I would go about implementing this. It isn't particularly hard, right? I mean, you guys have been doing logging uh, for a long time, but this is how I would go about it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my requirements. What are my requirements? What is it that I need to be logging? Now, in a moment, I'm going to give you some tips and some uh, some guidance on the kind of things to log. But the first step is to is to get into that uh, and define what your requirements are. Once we've got our requirements and we know what it is that we're going to be logging, what we're going to do is we're going to create a topic specific logging policy. Now I have a logging policy and the logging and monitoring policy. It's a logging and monitoring policy template. You can download it at hightable.io. Yes, it's part of the ISO 27001 toolkit, the ultimate toolkit for ISO 27001 certification, link below. If you aren't going to get that, no problem, then you're just going to need to write one. And there are other tutorials on my YouTube about how to write uh, a logging and monitoring policy. Then what we're going to do is Coming back to the requirements, what are the event log requirements? So the standard sets out what the log should consider. And these are the things that ideally the technology that you've got, the infrastructure you've got is going to support or potentially you're going to have to get an additional tool for that. But in this day and age, most tools will come with some logging capability in there. This is going to be a list, right? So I'm going to have to read that. So I'm not being rude as I look off camera. So the kind of fields that we would look at, user IDs, system activities, dates, times, and details of relevant events. So log on, log off, uh, device identity, system identifier, and location. We can look at things like network addresses and protocols. The following events should be considered for logging. So what kind of things am I gonna log? Successful and unsuccessful attempts to access systems, right? So those logging attempts, successful and unsuccessful. We're going to be logging changes to system configuration so we can see and record what has happened and when it's happened. We're going to consider the use of logging uh, privileged access, right? What are, the, what are the privileged users doing? Uh, and we're going to be recording that and keeping a record of that. We're going to be logging and monitoring the use of utility programs and applications, files accessed and the types of access, including deletion of important data files alarms raised by the access control system, activation and deactivation of security systems such as antivirus or intrusion detection. So when people are disabling it or turning it off, we want to be logging and monitoring that. The creation, modification and deletion of identities. So again, as part of our user management, we want to be recording, logging and monitoring that. And transact transactions executed by users in applications, okay? 
So in some cases, the applications are a service or a product provided and run by a third party, but it may be the case that we want to log and we want to monitor that. So you can see that there's a lot of things here that we can log and monitor and it becomes important to go back to step one and say, okay, let's identify for us based on our requirement, based on our business need, based on our risk, what of those are the things that we want to log and are there additional things that we want to log on top of that. Once we've got our logging running, what we need to do is we need to protect those logs, right? So again, we're gonna be looking at our user access management. Uh, the logs that you have need to be protected. We wanna ensure that someone couldn't do something to cover their tracks, right? So access to logs is gonna be important for us. If somebody is able to create, uh, sorry, to do system configuration, change configuration, create a admin account, activate some activities on that admin account, and then delete the logs that uh, go along with that, then that is gonna present us with a risk. So usually what we bring in here is segregation of duty. What we bring in here is access control, and we make sure that those logs are protected and access to those logs is protected. What we have to do when we go through that is we have to though ensure that we are meeting the requirements of the law. So we have our legal and contractual requirements register. We've done our uh, analysis and understanding. Ideally, we have a data protection professional within our organization. Uh, it is often the case that logging and monitoring may be collecting personal data. Um, and we need to make sure that we're operating within the bounds of the law. So bring in your legal counsel, bring in your data protection professional, make sure that whatever it is that you've decided in your logging requirements is actually lawful uh, and that you're implementing in that in line with the law. We get these logs, we implement the logs. The next step for us is to do analysis of the logs. It's pointless having logs if we don't do anything with them. The standard is looking for us to create them, protect them, and then analyze them. So we need to put in place a process for log analysis. Again, some of this is gonna be built in the tool, but it is gonna be the responsibility of an individual. Somebody at some point is gonna to have to be reviewing those logs. Ideally, this is gonna be done on a periodic basis. You can define that. Does somebody wanna be looking at logs once a month, once a quarter, half yearly or yearly? It would be a mistake, I would posit, uh, if you only ever looked at logs when things went wrong. So what we wanna be doing is we wanna be analyzing those logs, we wanna be looking for trends, we wanna be looking for anomalies, we wanna be catching these things before they occur, rather than being just reactive and looking once a, uh, an event has happened about what happened. We wanna try and catch it and stop it before it happens. So the guidance on the analysis is the necessary skills for the experts performing the analysis. So we need, we need skilled people to understand what it is that they're looking at. We need to determine the procedure of log analysis and document that. So what is it that we're doing? How are we analyzing logs? What reports are we generating? Who are we sharing it with? How are we feeding that back into things like risk management and continual improvement uh, if, if it needs that? We're gonna look at the attributes of each security related event. So we're gonna be creating those once we've defined what the requirements are, uh, understanding exactly what it is that we're gonna be recording. We're looking at exceptions identified through the use of predetermined rules. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to put some rules within our technology and within our systems that will trigger these events uh, and we're looking at managing that through exception. Known behavior patterns and standard network traffic compared to anomalies is something that we can consider and the results of trend or pattern analysis. So there's a lot that we can do when we're looking at analyzing logs and obviously we're gonna feed this into the new Control 5.7 Threat Intelligence where threat intelligence is gonna be informing us of new threats, emerging threats, and that we can then be adapting our uh, logging and monitoring to take account of that or to retrospectively analyze the logs that we've got to see whether or not that threat is actually realized with our, within our environment. So we're analyzing the logs and then we're gonna be putting in place, obviously, our monitoring. So you're gonna be doing specific monitoring activities, right? We've been through some of those already. They're very similar to the, uh, the events that you're gonna log. So access to protected resources, outbound network connections, service reports, physical security. Physical security is one 
uh, to not forget, right? You know, we're going to be monitoring things like access, location, CCTV. We've covered those again in previous uh, tutorials, but I'm just bringing them in here because they do form part of this as well. As we say, the standard itself likes to repeat itself, sometimes providing a little bit more granularity and referencing and calling back to other tutorials that we've already done. So if I was going to say how am I going to comply with logging, I'm going to understand and record the legal and regulatory and contractual requirements that I have for data. I need to understand what it is that I can and can't do. Yes, I'm going to conduct, uh, conduct a risk assessment based on legal, regulatory, contractual requirements and the risk assessment. I'm going to implement my logging solution. I'm going to implement that topic specific policy, the ISO 27001 logging and monitoring policy template. I'm going to document and implement the processes and technical implementations for logging and monitoring. And then I'm going to check that those controls are working by a process of ongoing internal audit. What will the auditor check? So the auditor is going to check a number of different areas, right? When the auditor comes and they're looking at you for certification, they're going to check your documentation. So what this means is, you know, yes, you have to have that documented legal register. You have to fully understand the legal and regulatory and contractual requirements around data um, and make sure that you're not breaching that uh, when it comes to your logging, um, when it comes to your logging solution. Uh, that you have information classification scheme in place. They're going to want to see that and a topic specific policy for access control and that you have documented your logging, taking all of that into account. Right. What else are they going to look for that you have implemented logging appropriately? So they're going to look at the systems here. They're going to look at is it actually implemented? You've got the documentation around it. You said it. <clears throat> they're going to get you to log in. They're going to get you to log into systems. They're going to, they're going to get you to show them reports. They're going to get you to show them that, that this is actually working, that you are actually logging and that you are actually monitoring. They're also going to want to see that you do it, what, what it is that you're doing as a result of that analysis, right? It isn't just a case that you're doing it. They're going to see then the follow on actions that you've taken as a result of that analysis. And they're going to be looking at cloud services and cloud providers and the logging and the logging capabilities within that and that they're being reviewed. So remember, they brought in cloud security service provider security. Um, so even if you don't own the infrastructure, even if it is outsourced, then there is logging capability built in and they're going to be checking that for you. They're also going to check that you've done your internal audits. You know, this comes up, well, it's every single control, right? But you have to do that process of internal audit and you have to be checking that the processes uh, uh, for logging and monitoring are working. Top three mistakes or top mistakes that people make. There are a couple. The first one is that you're collecting too much data, right? You've overanalyzed it, right? You've turned on a logging and monitoring solution and you're now just logging and monitoring everything, right? So this thing is generating gigabytes, terabytes of data that actually in reality you're never going to look at. Uh, it's information overload and it doesn't give you what you need. So be wary of just logging everything, right? Go back to that step one that we went through about understanding what our requirements are and making sure that we're implementing our requirements based on risk and our business needs right it can be as i say it's just overwhelming the amount of information that these systems can keep and that they can generate the next one is the biggest mistake is that you don't know what your legal obligations are again you've got to be careful on what you log you know there's a massive mistake we we see that you know people assume it's just information security uh, and they don't check the law and they don't check the regulations related to the data that they've got. You know, if you're looking at cost saving and not engaging with a legal professional and not engaging with a data protection professional, then that can be a mistake. And I would strongly advise that you do to make sure that what you have is legal uh, and compliant with the law and that you're not breaching that. I can't overemphasize that enough. So in conclusion, right, the logging and monitoring Yes, we want to generate logs. We want to know what's happening in our environment. We're going to be searching for anomalies. We're going to be putting in place, you know, normal rules around what we expect normal activity to be. We're going to be looking for those anomalies. And in the event that an incident occurs that requires a level of investigation, we know that our logs are protected, that we maintain a chain of custody, that we have segregation of duty, and that those logs are going to be as reliable as they can be. We're not logging everything. We're not creating mounds and mounds of logs just for the sake of it. We're targeting our logging based on our risk and our business need, and we're going to be absolutely golden. 
So my name is Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja, author of the Ultimate ISO 27001 Toolkit. Until the next tutorial, peace out.